everybody, welcome to Blood Bowl. This is week two, the Stalking Dead versus the Crazy Eights. I'm Complacent Badger. I'm Sierra Kilo. Greetings. Yes, and it is time for more Blood Bowl. I'm ready for it. This should be a stupendous game. This is going to be a crazy amount of hitting. I can already, right. I can already feel it in me. Uh, an unstoppable wave against an, a moving wall. I don't know how the phrase goes. Yeah, that's pretty much pretty much how I'm feeling. So, uh, once again, this is the week two. Looks like we're starting with uh, sweltering heat this w for this game. Outstanding. That is uh, that's what we want to see with Blood Bowl. In case anybody isn't aware, a sweltering heat after every drive. That means any time that uh, right before a k basically after a drive, there's always a kickoff. So that usually means after a touchdown or after halftime, a new drive starts. So at the end of every drive, every player that was on the pitch rolls a D6. On a 1, they are quote-unquote knocked out. But they're a special kind of knocked out that they automatically recover uh, on the next next drive. Right. So just heat exhaustion, no big deal. A mm -hmm. little bit of water and uh, you're good to go. Yep. Kind of weird that it's demons from the warp that are suffering from it and the undead, but, you know, I don't question it. Hey, it's, it's a very specific type of heat. Yeah. All right. So this is, uh, this is building on their last week's matchup, which was pretty good. Uh, saw some interesting tactics last week. I'm looking to see if that's going to continue this time. We saw some shallow kickoffs and some problems with order of operations from these guys. Yep. And uh, I think that toward the end of that first match, they sorted it out, and we'll see if they... Uh, they can carry that into this week. Yep, ball is up, and the halfling master chefs are cooking up some delicious grub, which is forcing the corn demons to lose two rerolls, and the stalking dead are now up to seven rerolls. That's pretty brutal. Yes, uh, it's going to be uh, a little tougher for the corn demons. They are the better team, but without the rerolls, they can make mistakes. Right, and mistakes are generally made. Uh, just in Blood Bowl in general, and it doesn't even have to be a mistake so much as just bad luck on the die. Yep, accidents, mistakes, they're all the same in Blood Bowl. Right, they, they usually lead to death. Yep, on death and only death. <laughs> so he's got his bloodletter picking up the ball, that's Malout Corningson, a level one bloodletter. He's got uh, four out of six of his star player points, so he's close to leveling. Ooh, a foul to start us out. That's uh, that's good stuff. Leave it to the demons, the crazy eights, to foul right. on a zombie too. I guess we just didn't like that one guy. Poor Ben. Poor Ben. It'll be fine. So setting up with a kind of like a flying V cage. Uh, interesting to say the least. Well, you know, it, any cage is better than no cage, so let's let's see what the cage-breaking abilities are going to be. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see if he keeps these ghouls back to safeties or not. It looks like he might be. Yeah, I think that's going to be the way to go, uh, especially because last time he, the um, dead maid, had some big order of operations where he left for three different turns. He had... Uh, the majority of his players uh, were, were stuck behind the ball because they hadn't moved. Yeah. Uh, starting out with a one-die blitz and getting lucky enough to get Defender down. I don't mind it. It's a little too rich for my blood. Oh, I know. So it looks like I've he, uh, not only did he uh, purchase a Halfling Master Steps, he also purchased a Wizard, so that's scary. Right. That'll uh, keep you on your toes, no big deal. All right, so uh, getting kind of a uh, cautious defense, uh, leaving both wings open, but none of his players are in prime position to take advantage of it. Uh, not taking advantage of it with that uh, pit fighter, he actually getting set up to do a block. I'm a little surprised that didn't need that extra assist, yet he uh, went for it. Yeah, and that's sometimes a mistake if you just don't count well enough. Uh, you, you're thinking you're going to get it, or, and then you don't, or you put an extra one on there that doesn't Ooh. do anything for you. Uh, try, and that might have been a misclick. I don't know. That was a, a negative two modifier to that dodge roll, so that needed a five plus to happen. Five pluses are tough. Yeah, and it, it resulted in a stun, so that's a play that's going to be out. 
yeah, that's 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 bad luck. And uh, so, you know, so you can only uh, 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 you can only roll get away so much bad luck, right? All right. So again, we see that uh, one die blitz with the same character, and though it came up with both down, where both had block, nothing would have happened. He opted to use one of those seven rerolls to reroll that. If you have seven rerolls, I guess use them, but so early in the turn, that seems kind of risky. Yeah, that's the the point of the story is order of operations. Is If you're going to do something that has a risk involved, do all the things that don't have any risk involved first. And I don't have any problem re using that reroll, especially when you have so many of them this late in the half. They're going to go to waste anyway. But just remember, though he has seven rules, he can only use one per turn, so just using them willy-nilly is not very useful. Right. Uh, getting a both down on that zombie, I, I guess he was going for it. It was a two-die tackle, the opponent's choice. That seemed unnecessarily risky. But then again, it's a zombie, so who cares? Right, right. Regenerate. No big deal. Uh, starting off with that bloodthirster, he's pretty he's pretty well known, uh, the uh, coach there, for using the bloodthirster first, and it, I, I want to say more often than not, maybe just because I have a particular memory, but more often than not, uh, going poorly for him. Yeah, he does complain about that guy a lot, but when it works, it works, right? Uh, I don't know if it was on purpose, but he tricked him into a one-die block. Uh, that frenzy pushing into that ghoul, giving it a, a one die instead of the two, so that that worked out. If it was on purpose, kudos. Yeah, right. Not too bad. So this turned into a pretty interesting match. I like seeing uh, the advancement between the two weeks. Alright, so using that on a one die uh, results in a stun, so a lot of one die blocks going around. And that's, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not in for that unless somebody's got block. A uh, bunch of assists against that bloodthirster ghoul taking him down with a stun. So that, uh, I guess that bl uh, block against the bloodthirster was only possible because he uh, opened it up with that zombie, so mm, uh, arguably useful. Right. Uh, one die after, I think, already using the reroll this turn on that zombie with the ghoul against the blood letter. Uh, following up, don't know if that was the best choice. I don't, I don't hang back. Uh, following up, letting him be a target for uh, the corn herald there that has block and juggernaut. Yeah, that block's a powerful tool, man. Is if you can get players with that, it makes a big difference. It takes a lot of badness out of those die rolls. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people consider block to be the most powerful skill in the game. I think that's true. Ooh, double attacker down. No rerolls remaining. We could thank the Halfling Master Chefs for that. Yeah, buddy. Uh, and that happens sometimes if you don't make good choices on when your rerolls are used. Even if you have two of them, you have to be very careful when you're using them because situations like that arise where it's legitimately just a bad roll. Yeah. And that that's really, those are the kind of things that can turn a game. Yep, and if you've used your rerolls on one die blocks or doing poor risk management and things like that, and you use your rerolls up trying to make up for mistakes, then when the actual bad luck starts rolling in, ah, I, I, I feel no sympathy. Um, I feel the same way. Um, I can support bad luck, but I can't necessarily support bad decisions, and a lot of times, successive bad decisions lead to bad luck. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one die uh, block attacker down, rerolls into a defender down, luckily he's got the rerolls to make up for it, and the ball bounces out and gets a lucky throw in to the back. Yeah, that's crazy, huh? Yep, Ghoul in prime position to take advantage of it, and uh, Korn not playing any backfield whatsoever, so it doesn't look like it's going to help much. Uh, foul on the Bloodthirster. Yep, I can pretty much safely say that's a touchdown, right? Yeah, the uh, both of the Corn Herald and the Pit Fighter back there can reach the ghoul, so it's not good as gone. 
But that ghoul positioning right there might as well make it so. Yeah, I think so. Oh, but moving it back in there allows the the herald to actually be able to do something. Uh-oh. Let's see if that herald can get to grips. Right. It's definitely interesting to see how uh, a more advanced team, uh, one that's played a season, uh, like a Action Jackson and his Crazy Eights are playing uh, the Stalking Dead, uh, a, a newer team. Yeah. Watching, uh, watching how the strategy has part effect and uh, what just is straight team. And leading with the Bloodthirster again, getting an attacker down and a boat down. Luckily, it was a Blitz Juggernaut coming into effect, leading into a Defender down, stunning the ghoul. Good stuff. Uh, so, once again, starting with that Blitzer, or sorry, that uh, Bloodthirster when it is not key to victory. And doing other blocks right now. Right. So if you were in that position, what would you be doing? I would have gone for the ghoul. Yep. With the Herald, I would have gone for the ghoul. Um, he's got tackle. Your odds of actually bringing him down are pretty impressive. Uh, that was not the correct way to dodge. He dodged into the ghoul. Uh, with movement allowance 6, he could have... Uh, I can't count it anymore, but... He may have had to do a couple going for it, maybe one going for it, but uh, he should have been able to make it. Right. I think that's the that's your primary target, and when we talk about order of operations, the, the best thing that you can do is get the ball carrier, if possible, especially in that situation when he's way out in the open. Yep, he uh, wasted the blitz with the bloodthirster instead of using it with the herald, and uh, even if you don't put him down, like let's say he didn't have tackle and he still had dodge, which the Herald would have made up for the dodge anyways, let's say it was a pit fight or something, at least having a guy next to him and forcing him to dodge, he, right. he may roll snake eyes just like you did earlier. Right, forcing, forcing you to make that roll, and you know, we, we say that over and over again, is make your opponent throw dice, because eventually, you know, there aren't any like super benefits, like getting a six, yeah, whatever action is completed but you don't get anything supplementary to that, you know? Yep. But when you, you the opportunity for failure is, uh, is always there. Uh, the Bloodthirster and a Pit Fighter out for the Corn Demons. Two, zo sorry, a ghoul, sorry, zombie and two ghouls out for the undead. So, uh, Bloodthirster out is going to be tough, but let's see if he plays better without the uh, tantalizing temptation of the Bloodthirster. Yeah, and that's one of the, like, I've been thinking about getting rid of my big guy as well. Just uh, not 100% certain he's uh, as much of a benefit as he is a detriment. Man, that disturbing presence just hanging out and not doing anything with him is just, just scary, I know, though. I know. Oh, it really is. Like, it's it's uh, demoralizing. Plus, mm -hmm. he, he got a level, so mm. um, he's he's even worse. <laughs> he, he is claws and mighty blow. So uh, the benefits of being an older team showing right now is that there's a pretty uh, pretty vast difference in the number of players in the pitch right now, setting up with a really good cage right now. Yeah, I like, I like that. And not necessarily plugging the gaps. He still has just as much movement, so uh, not a bad little ancillary movements he has. I probably would have uh, tagged adjacent people so that they can't move in on me and I can keep my stuff open with and forcing him to make dodge rolls to close in on my cage. I'm with that. Because these dodge rolls are really important. Yep, these zombies over here have free reign to clog up your cage as does this white. Had he just put these pit fighters and heralds over there instead of uh, doing extra cage blocking. Right, and you know we, we see that sometimes too is that people go a little nuts on the cage. There's a, there's a whole other other side of the field that you can put bodies on to, to threaten. Uh, another one die tackle, the attacker down to a defender down, but he uh, generates a injury, so uh, worth it? Probably. Yeah, I'm with that. Uh, does some follow up, making sure to keep that uh, presence back so that he doesn't get hit and open up more space, so that's a really good move, very cognizant of his field position and what his strengths are. Good stuff. I like to see that. I uh, don't know if pulling that white away from over there was a good move. Uh, it leaves it completely open for the pass. He's going to be very... He's uh, in a situation where he's going to be looking for anything with considering he has so few turns left, so I see a pass coming. Yeah, I do too. 
rolling out back and to the uh, left as we're viewing it would be a good move right now. That pit fighter can get away. The other one tagging that uh, white so that there's no chance of that white doing anything. Yep, that's a good strategy. Getting to that open side of the field is a big, mm -hmm. a big deal. Okay, opening up with uh, blocks, uh, knockout, that's good. Uh, once again, the risk management thing. Uh, so he's tying up the white. Let's see yeah. if he goes for the pass. He does not. He is, uh, I guess he is d deciding that he will not be getting a touchdown. Well, in that case. Uh, once again, though hitting people gets you star player points, it does not get you the game. All right, uh, doing a going for it. I <laughs> don't know why. There was no, maybe he felt, I guess there wasn't enough field. If he didn't do a going for it, he wouldn't have made it all the way. I, I, I see why he did it. Uh, yeah, l luckily, okay. yeah. Uh, bounces into the pit fighter's hands, but he's got enough assistance that it's going to end poorly. Right. Uh, def defender stumbles is enough to bring the pit fighter down. Um, do not count out Agility 3. Agil agility 3 can make that. Ooh! Ouch! So that was a badly hurt on a failed going for it. Why was he doing a going for it? I do not know. Uh, yeah, you, you see that a lot and you just get kind of curious as to the, the risk versus the rewards of that one extra space. So, uh, yeah, he didn't have enough field presence downfield to actually ever make a touchdown out of that. He was going for it and injured his player. So, not a long-term injury, but he will be out for the game. So, it may turn this tide. And I've, and I've seen that before. And if I'm not mistaken, it was in this game last, in the first week, was, uh, yeah, just... I'm looking at my notes and I can't see it. Pit but fighter. there was definitely there was definitely a time when uh, we see somebody picking up the ball, going for it uh, on on a turn where you can't can't score. So uh, don't don't do the going for it if you don't have to. Best you know instead roll out to somewhere safe and try to throw the ball. Maybe get a star player point. Yep, uh, foul right there. Try to get a zombie out to get more of a player presence against your opponent, and then. Uh, Picking up the ball but not going for a pass just for the free star player point is odd to me, especially when you have no chance and your opponent doesn't really have a chance. And that would have leveled that pit fighter. Yeah, and the uh, other thing to consider is that those short passes, those handoffs, don't, uh, don't have any benefit to star player points. Yes, handoffs do not quick pass, which he was um, actually really open to doing. Oh, dead player with no regeneration. Love dead players. Uh, that was on a both down incurred by him by his own uh, block. That's the best. And that's uh, that's that one die block for you getting that both down. Uh, you see that you know when you go extra risk, you don't always see extra reward. Yeah, uh, Blood Bowl is not the game to play play against the the dice. Um, so. Uh, I haven't really been keeping track, but it looks like he's been doing at least one one die block a turn. The uh, stalking dead have. Yep. Uh. And you know, hey, that's that's a valid option. But wait till you get some uh, block on you guys. You just you need the players for the second half. I know they have regeneration, but you know, now now there's uh, you know in a badly hurt and uh, and a dead guy. So you're definitely you're two players down. And I yeah. know that. Uh, you know, you look on the other side and you see that, uh, you know, more players in the casualty boxes, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus, uh, I didn't see it when it scrolled past when we started, but yeah, players. Yeah, oh, he's got, uh, unfortunately uh, for the Corn Demons, they had three succumb to sweltering heat while the Stocking Dead had none. Right, and that makes the difference. Yep. Uh, the weather has changed to pouring rain, though, so we will not see any more sweltering heat for the game. This is, I mean, honestly, this is the most random I've seen it, uh, where it it's went from one event to another event. Mm-hmm. 
So it's looking like uh, eight players for the Corn Demons against the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Ooh. for the Undead. And let's reduce that down to a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie with his one die, bl one die block. I mean, as much as I hate one die blocks, it seems to be working. Yeah. All right, so uh, leaving that flank open for the herald to roll in, we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Right. Uh, another one die. In that instance, he has blocks, so it wasn't too terrible of a risk. But the opponent also had blocks, so not a lot of gain either. But he got a defender down, so. Yep. I uh, didn't follow follow up to put pressure on that. Uh, Harold, if he would have followed up, he could have put him in a prime position to do another one die off the pitch. That would be great. You, you love seeing that opportunity. And uh, with the free zombie, he could have even have made it a two die where he's most likely going to put him off the pitch. Still has that wizard holding on to it. Oh, lightning bolt to the bloodthirster. Not and there's the wizard. <laughs> not resulting in much, but hey, why not? Uh, That's just fun to see. Yeah, probably would have saved it in case I got into an oh shit situation. But, you know, it's fun to zap a unholy demon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As uh, Master Moose says, he likes the lightning bolt. I prefer the fireball because it can take out multiple players. Yeah, the 2 plus on the lightning bolt is nice. It's uh, more of an odds of actually doing something. But uh, then you still have to penetrate. So honestly, I like the fireball, because if you can get them bunched up enough, you get a bunch of four pluses, and then somebody's bound to pen. Oh, yeah. Well, and it was, it was pretty interesting, because uh, in our game, he did that. You, you know, after he was like, no, like the lightning bolt, and I gave him a perfect opportunity to fireball, and it worked out for him. Nice. He'll, so you can, you can thank me, everybody else in the league, for that, when he does that to you. <laughs> So, uh, bringing, in, bringing over another player, but uh, uh, obviously not understanding the, uh, the assist system. So, risking a going for it to just still do a one-die block and using a reroll. Right. That's tough. Uh, the reason why not working the pit fighter that he was, the blocker was the undead helmet, the mutilator. Uh, though he was getting a plus one, the pit fighter adjacent to him was unengaged by anybody else, so giving a plus one assist to the herald. Yeah, that's where it goes, and that's you know that's they give some good examples in the living rulebook of uh, specifically they do what do they call like that instant replay mm -hmm. where they explain it very well how those uh, tackle zones affect the uh, blocks. Yep, uh, leading with the blitzer or sorry the uh, bloodthirster without picking up any players and getting better field position to make sure that in case something goes bad that uh, the ball just doesn't just get away from him and right. instead leading with the blitzer or the bloodthirster as I was saying and I continuously mess up. That'll uh, be fine. Uh, so now the ball will definitely get away from him. A foul putting the bloodthirster down for an extra turn. Excellent choice. So right here again risk management not working out. Right. There was really very little benefit to not addressing the ball carrier. Yeah, the opponent even left it to where your your the herald was in a good position to at least stand. Right. Uh, and odd, the undead not actually moving the ball carrier while having all this chance. I think he's afraid of the pit fighter rolling off or the herald standing up. Yep, we'll see. We'll see how that turns into. Uh, an opportunity or, oh. or a missed opportunity. Uh, doing some going for it that's not actually getting him away from anybody. I guess putting a little bit of distance between him and the Herald, forcing the Herald to have to make go for it. Uh, the horns are pretty scary, so that may work out in his favor. Let's see if the... Oh, blitzing with the Herald. Can still reach him. Fails the initial go... Oh, but uses the reroll to make it. Got it. Tackles him down. Does not have the remaining movement to get adjacent to the ball, though. But that's a that's a good move. See, that's what we're talking about: is attacking the ball carrier, getting uh, getting that mm -hmm. movement movement when you need it. Yep. Uh, pit fighter going, dodging, picking up. Uh, might have tried to pick up that uh, two the one pit fighter that was hanging out over there, but uh, 
he dodged with the other pit fighter, which is okay. Yep, I like it. This is gonna turn into a bloodbath in that over that ball, I think. Now that everybody's so free. Yeah. Oh, uh, one die blitz. Actually, re-rolling the push and getting lucky with the defender stumbles. Very risky. But I mean, that's the risk that he's been taking the whole time. So. Uh, one benefit though, he did have block, and the opponent did not. Another blitz on the bloodthirster, or sorry, another foul on the bloodthirster, knocking out the bloodthirster, but ejecting ejecting the player. So that's a zombie gone, but that's also a bloodthirster gone. So. Mm. In the grand scheme of things, right? The I guess that was his goal. Yep. Oh. He got failed. And that's what happens when you run out of rerolls. That pouring rain is tough. Uh, probably would have picked up some players to kind of assist in blocking those guys. It's probably a bad choice. He had three players just laying there that could have stood up. So uh, basically just giving this touchdown away. Uh, sometimes players get frustrated and don't think about their risk management. Right. And when you play against uh, in the uh, pouring rain, you know, it's... It's a... Uh, you're not remembering that you have a negative one to your pickup rolls. Yep. Alright, so it uh, looks like everybody except one pit fighter back, but I don't know if uh, three turns is going to be enough to make the difference here. Well, good, good luck if it is, so... These aren't teams that are well known for three turn touchdowns. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone two three turn touchdowns. Or rather, yeah. two in one three turns. Pick up fail, there it is. Yeah, this is uh this is one of those lost games, so do what you can to get some star player points wherever possible, and it's not gonna be throwing the ball, so use yeah. your uh use your players, get some hits, do what you can. Ball is up in the air, so we have a free turn of blitz. Uh, some odd positioning on uh, the setup for both teams, so Blitz is not going to be that useful. Uh, doing the follow-up, I don't know if I would have done that, but, you know, it's a zombie. I guess pile them up on the Bloodthirster, slow down the Bloodthirster. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Alright, so let's see what the Crazy Eights have to do. Alright, pickup fail. Uh, probably would have tried to get some uh, positioning first. That would have. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we just said that, that, that those pickups are going to be tough, so use, use that as your last or close to last move. Put some bodies around the ball in the first place to defend against the pickup failing and if you have bodies around it the pickup fails and it starts bouncing around you have an opportunity to pick it up yep uh, plus and then, and then you can worry about a f I believe that was a yes that was a foul resulting in a badly hurt um, yeah the uh, another benefit of having bodies around is that it doesn't necessarily uh, make the ball open to where the opponent can just come pick it up uh, doing a really risky move on trying to grab that ball. Yeah. Uh, nobody giving actual coverage to the ball right now to try to keep the opponent from doing it. So it's just a quick back and forth on who can pick the ball up first. Uh, especially with the ghoul and this open lane. This really, really poor defensive playing right now. <laughs> just well, it's, it's everybody's so focused on picking up the ball. It's great. All right. Get people there. Good move. Good move. You know, just because, you know, and, you know, a little frustrated at this point watching this, but just remember, if you are losing, do not just give your opponent star player points. That will make them that much tougher the next time you have to play them. Yeah. All right, no attempt to even blitz the ghoul to reduce your negative modifiers. Yeah, it's, it's just a, a shit show at this point. Yeah, uh, I feel like there's a lot of frustration going on uh, instead of thinking. Yep, and that's, I mean, you'll get that when you're when you're already in a position where either you've won and you can't be bothered to think of the negative consequences, or you've lost and Woo! you're frustrated, and it, it's, you're already, you're dealing with a slippery ball anyways, I mean, that's a frustration, that's a just 
built for frustration. Yeah, the only thing I could say really is uh, for the corn demons is uh, focus on your risk management and do not lose your head. You need to make sure that you're thinking to every second of the game. The moment that you think you've lost, you have lost because you're just giving yourself up. Uh, though this game was, there was a couple examples where the game was already completely lost. Had he been playing every turn to his maximum potential, Blood Bowl is never over. It's not over until that end of that 16th turn. You can still do it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I did, uh, I found my note about it. So it was the last turn of the first half of the first game where he had a pickup, a short pass that used a reroll, two going forwards that led to an injury, Was mm. uh, and that was the dead. So yeah. uh, showed that he, he kind of did that again where there's no reward, so don't take the risk. And you're talking specifically for the uh, stalking dead doing that. Right, the stalking dead. So they did that last time, and they did it this time as well. So yep. Uh, uh, the advice I have for the stalking dead, careful with those rolls. Uh, make sure that you understand the odds for every roll that you're doing, and understand whether or not there is those odds are worth the risk. A lot of times, honestly, with the odds, they wouldn't have been worth it for me. You did come out smelling like a rose on this time, but it will not happen all the time. Just be, right. be ready to deal with the consequences. And that's that's uh, good advice. Is every every turn that you uh, you make you take a risk, uh, whether it's necessary, unnecessary, in your favor or not in your favor, you're gonna have to make sure that you've done all that you can to to make it as little bit of a risk as possible. Uh, but other than that, good win. Yep, that was a uh, it was a pretty good game up until about the last three or four turns, but uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was hard fought at the very least. For sure. All right, well, uh, we will see you for the next game. I hope everybody has a good time. Cheers. Cheers.